Well, hey, I text 6372, Dr. Johnson here. I just got back from Chicago in the conference that uh, I was at. And as I think back about the conference, I don't know if you've ever seen the old Far Side cartoon where the student walks up to the professor and says, excuse me, sir, can I please be excused? My brain is full. But that's kind of how I feel a return from the conference. There was a lot of really great learning. I thought I'd start off our video that's going to talk more about our final assignment in this class. I'm just with a couple of shots of some of my adventures in Chicago. And then we'll talk a little bit about the overall assignment three and also really focus in on how the reflection is going to change. Um, so I wanted to show you a couple of shots of where I was. This is what my walk in every day looked like. I was able to stay with some family up in Chicago. It's where I grew up and took the train in every day. And then this is the hotel. It's the Palmer House. I think it's from 1870. And I think it may still have some of the same carpet and chandeliers from that time. But it's a beautiful old, old hotel just a few blocks from the lake. I was there, just another shot of some of the beautiful artwork I get to see, just going up and down the streets every day to and from the conference. And then while I was there, I actually got to eat one of my favorite foods, which is Chicago-style pizza, and I got to actually have that twice. I got to have it once with my family and once with some of my colleagues while I was there. But the purpose of this video, as I mentioned previously, is just to give you some details about the, the course build. Just to, We're going to do a very quick overview of the overall assignment and then spend a little bit of we spent a little bit of detail and time on how the reflective activity is, is changed. So just remember to use the Vian Sosolsky text, Appendix B, pages 212 through 219 for some guidance on that. There's a real nice checklist in there that'll help you with that, just to understand the detail and what, what the expectations are. Um, some things that it does need to include, you'll need to include a welcome announcement. This is where you'll provide information for your students about what the expectations of the course are and um, setting some of the norms. You also need to include those three modules that you submitted with your assignment two and the accompanying activities. These include things like your student teacher interactions and then all of the student materials that you'll be using for instruction. Um, you want to also upload your about me and your course calendar if you haven't done that already. And just with those, you know, that's content from our first assignment and our second assignment in this class. Make sure that you applied the feedback that you've gotten and made the necessary changes before you submit it into your Moodle for this assignment three. There's also a bonus opportunity. If you'd like to earn an extra five points on this assignment, you can create a screencast that shows students how to navigate your course and upload that into your Moodle. Um, we're going to spend a little bit more time just talking about how the course build reflection choice board is, is going to be different this time after having some discussions with the other professors who teach this class and reviewing your, your midterm feedback. Um, we decided to make these changes. So there are four choices here. And there's a video reflection. And you'll notice that there's a few choices listed here. iMovie, Adobe Spark, a screencast. Um, with each of these, there's some options listed. But there's another program that you'd like to use for the reflective activity that you pick. And you're only going to pick one out of four. Um, you're welcome to do that. For example, if I was going to do the video reflection, um, it's going to be a, a, a reflective video record of of your learning while building your online course, I would probably use Loom, which is the program that I'm using to make this screencast tonight. Um, you can also make a graphic reflection or sometimes I call it an infographic. You could use Jamboard, Piccolage, Prezi. There's also one called Visme that's pretty good, or some of you may have used Pictochart or Easily to create a reflective collage of the images and create a record of your learning while building your online course. You could also go with an audio reflection. This is gonna be a podcast. You could use a, an app like Audacity one that I like that's real Chromebook friendly is, is one called Twisted Wave. That's the audio reflection is to make a podcast of your learning while building your online course. Or if, if you like the sort of more traditional writing format, or maybe you've already gotten a head start on your reflection, you might choose the blog version of your reflection. It'll be a written record of your learning while building your online course. And for each of these, remember, you're not going to do all four of these. You're just going to pick one. Um, just some additional reflection information that you'll need as you're crafting it with the new the new guidelines. Um, the parts of it, there'll still be an introduction. There'll be a project reflection. That'll be the most significant or substantial part of your reflection assignment, and also a conclusion or some conclusion marks. Remember to use APA 7 formatting. If you haven't already printed out the Purdue OWL APA guidelines, you may want to do that and just have that on hand as you go on. Um, one of the things that's also in some of the documents that will be uploaded here in a little bit to our course show on Blackboard, um, there's a list of questions to utilize in your reflection. And also just remember, remember that what, what we're looking for in the reflection is that you reflect in your course learning 
in your reflections. So this would be reference things like referencing key concepts and texts that you're applying through the creation of your Moodle course. In terms of your APA 7 formatting guidelines, it'll depend a little bit on which format you choose to make your, your reflection in. If you're going with a, a text version, such as in a blog, um, you want to use the, you would actually write out the citations at APA 7 formatting and include them within the document. If you're doing something with a podcast or a video, that would be a case where you would need to just verbally mention the source, you know, the, the authors of the source and the, and the title and maybe the page numbers that you got the information from. But do make sure that you use the APA 7 formatting. Just a couple other details to keep in mind as you're building this. Um, seek help early on if you need it. I know I've heard from several of you already. Um, if you need some, some, you want to have a video call, or if you want to, you want to do some, do some communication through email, I'm always glad to do that and to, to support you in that way. Um, also, make sure you begin to upload your files now. I think most of you have already started to do that. Um, this is a good way to avoid issues, you know, wait until the last minute. Oh, wait, it didn't upload. Um, but start with that. Start with getting those things uploaded now. Um, also, I'm going to be creating a series of some video supports on Moodle resources um, and just little how-to videos. If there's, something, if there's something that you're struggling with and you'd like to see a screencast about it, just reach out and we'll see if we can make one for you. But as we're heading toward the finish line here in this course, I just want to continue to encourage you to um, and encourage you with the work that you've done this semester and hope you all have a great week.